Welcome to Lesson 3, Baseball Definitions and Regulations. There are six innings in a game. However, a regulation game is one tall or ended by the umpire in which at least four innings were played by the visitors and the home team. That is, unless the home team did not need its half of the innings to win. If the home team is behind after visitors had batted, then to be a regulation game, the home team must have an opportunity to complete their time at bat in the fourth inning. A team must have nine players throughout the game. If at any time they drop below the minimum of nine players, the game is forfeited. Is usually scored as six to zero, shutout. Umpire and managers usually sign the scorebook. If after four complete innings, one team has 10 or more runs than the other team, the manager of the team with the least runs should concede the victory to the other team. Do not count on this being done, and it's not something that scorekeepers should even be concerned with, so surely do not suggest it. Leagues are permitted to adopt modifications to some of the rules above, and perhaps your first awareness of it will be when it's used in the game. Keep in mind, you can't learn everything, and it's not necessary to do so. Also, do not be afraid to call time if you need to sort something out. In the minor division, leagues often adopt what is called the Mercer Rule. This is a rule to limit the number of runs usually fired earned in any one inning by a team in order to prevent runaway games. The Mercer Rule usually will not apply in the sixth or the last occurred inning. For understanding how it is recorded, let's say the rule applies and the team on offense has already scored four runs. Let's say further there are two runners on base and the batter hits or knocks a home run. The umpire and the team is going to let the play run out and all the runners score. In your scorebook, only the five runs are recorded, not the seven. The batter would be credited with the home run, however. How this is recorded is explained later. Okay, let's talk about tie games. Baseball does not like tie games, and a major league game can go on in perpetuity. The longest game in professional baseball history occurred in 1981. The game lasted 8 hours and 25 minutes. As a scorekeeper, you will not see games this long as there are imposed time limits. In the major league divisions, the game would continue until ties broken. In the minor division, usually a team can play one additional inning to break the tie. If the tie is not broken, it is recorded as a tie in your scorebook. See time limits next slide. Okay, let's talk about time limits and rescheduled games. Some league games are limited in time provided at least four innings have been played. In Little League, as an example, a new inning cannot be started if the length of the game reached two hours. A canceled game or a game that ended before it was deemed a regulation game is usually rescheduled for when the two teams face each other in the season, providing it does not result in two full games being played when they meet. Okay, let's talk about some definitions worth knowing. A balk is an illegal act in which the pitch is not delivered. To be a balk, a runner must be on base. All base runners advance one base, even to home. The rule is usually suspended in the very minor divisions and not enforced. The reason is they balk all the time. A batter runner is a term that describes the player that just batted and has become a runner, and the initial play which made the batter a runner has not ended. A batting order is the list of batters and the order in which they will make a plate appearance. It can list all players. In minor divisions, all players usually bat whether they are playing on defense or not. Substitution in the minor division is usually permissible for all kinds of things, including using the restroom. When the player comes back, they are inserted back into the game as if they never left. The scorekeeper should not get involved in trying to track these types of substitutions. The substitution of the pitcher is usually a one-time event, however, and once the pitcher is substituted, the one substituted out cannot be returned to pitching in the same game, but can be placed in other positions in the field. A double header is two games played by the same team on the same day. 
A fielder's choice describes a situation in which a fielder fills a ground ball and chooses to throw it to another base to get a runner out instead of the batter runner heading to first base. A force play is when a runner is forced to leave a base when a ball is hit but is unable to make it to the next base before being put out. A forfeited game is a game ordered ended by the chief umpire in favor of one team. One example is not having nine players throughout the game. The score is recorded 6-0 to zero and the umpire and manager sign the official scorebook along with the scorekeeper. If you only have one umpire, she is the chief umpire. A ground ball is a ball that hits the ground prior to reaching a fielder and in its travel remain close to the ground or even bounces on the ground. A foul tip is a tip of the ball by the batter that travels straight back into the catcher's glove. An illegal pitch is a pitch delivered to the batter when the pitcher did not have his foot in contact with the pitcher's plate. This rule can be, and often is, relaxed in the minor divisions, and some umpires inform a complaining manager that his team is pitching from the same hole that is forming in front of the pitcher's mound. An illegally batted ball is one in which it was hit by the batter when one or both feet were on the ground outside the batter's box. Offensive interference is any act that interferes, confuses, or hinders any player attempting to make a play. The ball will be cleared dead and the runner may be called out. There is a rule in baseball which allows the umpire to write a wrong. It is for those situations where there is no rule book answer. A league is a group of teams that play each other or play another league, usually by some formal agreement. Such an arrangement would be called an inner league agreement. Obstruction is an act of a fielder not in possession of the ball that impedes a run a fake tag which makes a player believe he is out or that the player has the ball can be called obstruction. A quick return or a quick pitch is a throw designed to catch a batter off guard and is an illegal pitch. A run is a score made by a player who reached first base from the batter's position and touched first base, second base, third base, and then home without being placed out. Overslide occurs when a runner slides and goes past a base and can be tagged out. A game is one that meets the definition of a regulation game when it is declared over by the umpire. A suspended game is a game that will be played at another time. It will be resumed exactly where it will stop, although the players can be substituted in. Correct scorebook recording is crucial. A retouch is the return of a runner to a base that the runner had left previously in the same play. Every once in a while I hear Sean and Randall in the background playing Halo Reach. If, uh, if you hear children in the background, that's what you're hearing. A rundown, also known as a pickle, is when a runner is trapped between two bases and there is an active effort by two or more defensive players to put the runner out. I left the word uh, play out in the next two. So a double play is two outs made in one continuous effort by the team on defense. Both outs can be made by the same defensive player. As an example, he catches a fly ball and then tags the base the runner left and fell to return and tag up. A triple play is three outs made in one continuous effort by the team on defense. All three outs can be made by the same defensive player. He catches a fly ball and then tags two runners out. There are certain times in the game when a runner must leave his base and advance to the next base, and this is what we call a forced move. This is the basic rule about forced runs, which can result in a forced out. A runner is forced to move from a base he safely reached previously 
only when a ball is hit and the following circumstances exist. A runner on first is forced to run to second if the batter hits a ball that is not caught in the air or foul. Even if the second baseman is holding the ball in the baseline, the runner on first has to run or will be called out. The runner just can't step off the base and hope the baseman leaves. Failing to advance is a mount. A runner on second is forced to run to third if the batter hits a ball that is not caught in the air or foul and there is a runner on first. A runner on third is forced to run to home if the batter hits a ball that is not caught in the air or foul and there is a runner on first and second. Note, because the runner is forced to run to the next base, he can be tagged out midway standing on the base he should have left, or be put out by simply touching the base the runner had to reach before the runner gets there. Well, we have completed lesson three, and you need to proceed to lesson four to continue. At least in that video, there's some pictures. This has been a fairly dry subject, but regulations are important, and you're going to have to view this uh, video several times to learn these rules just so that you know what's taking place on the playing field. That's it.